last day. Now it's morning. I pray y'all, pray all has been well. Happy Friday. We made it. Woo! We made it. Happy Friday. Um, I pray y'all have a blessed day today. A wonderful day. Um, we pray all is well. Continues to be well. Great weekend. No kids is almost out of school. Almost. Almost. Some of them probably already out. Almost. Almost. Um, but um, if you remember that whatever um, Hey Sister Wesley Whatever um, Business or company Or whatever you have Event um, that you need Support with Just send it or uh, tag me in it Make sure it's uh, public To be shared So that we can um, So I can share it Your business, what you're doing um, I can share it on my page But um, Try to um, Do that if you can Or you know somebody that's doing something that's positive Positive, positive uh, Let me know You can inbox it to me or send it to me Share it with me um, So I can share it Okay um, But it, other than that um, I know My classmate he don't send me two videos <laughs> The first video was about uh, Pastor Leandra Johnson. Um, hey, how are you? Um, the first video was about Pastor Leandra Johnson. About you know, it was a year ago when she did the rant about cussing about, about the church and all that. And he said we don't have to talk about that one no more because <laughs> he uh, he sent me a different one. The other one was uh, I posted it last night um, about the pastor um, that went live about <coughs> excuse me I should have some water about the young lady that was um, badgering the church talking down on the church um, and she said I'm only going live because you went live and uh, y'all need to see that video if you haven't seen the video. Hopefully y'all did. I shared it twice. I shared it on my um, God Save page and on my page. But um, I love you too. Um, pray you have a blessed day. I love y'all. Let me say that before I get to, you know. But um, I pray y'all have a great day. Marvelous Monday. Great Friday. However you want to do it. This thing, I'm about to tighten this thing up. Um, but, um, yes, but we was talking about, he, uh, he sent me that video cause he wanted to discuss the, the pastor that made the comment or made the Facebook live about the young lady that was, um, talking down on the church, talking down on the pastor. Um, and she felt like she needed to make a video to get her point across. She said, I release you. Um, we don't have anything, any more dealings. We have nothing else we need to talk about. Um. Hey, Sharon, how are you? We have nothing we need to talk about. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we, we have nothing else we need to talk about. We need to, She said, we've done all we can do. We don't we done pray with you. We don't gave you a, a prayer cloth, a shawl. We don't um, uh, talk to you. We don't support you. And she said, I, I believe if you're not having, having your, pretty much you don't have your hands reached out to accept the help or to accept what we're trying to offer to you. Maybe this is just not what you need. Maybe you need to talk to a, you need to talk to a doctor or a psychiatrist or somebody. Maybe this ministry, I know this particular ministry is not for you. And she said, but what you can't keep doing is still talk about um you still you can't still talk about the pastor and put the pastor down. And she said cuz that caused problems for yourself. She says doing damnation to yourself. By talking down and putting down the pastor she said every church you go to you have the same problem and you talk down on leaders you pull leaders down and you can't keep going through that and thinking that nobody is gonna gonna say anything she said he might not say nothing but me being the overseer of this church this particular house what we're gonna do we're gonna release you but i would not allow you to keep talking down on this church she said you can talk about me all you want to but when you start talking about the church where i'm i'm, I'm a member of i'm the overseer of you gonna talk down on the church and you think that that's okay and ain't nobody gonna say nobody's gonna say anything. She said, "Oh no, I'll say something." She said, "I I, I stand flat footed and I tell you that you're wrong, 
and that you need to go and see it, it, maybe the ministry, maybe church is not can't help you because you're not accepting the help for one. Maybe it's a medication you need to be on. I I just will say this, <laughs> and this is just me speaking. I'm gonna read what y'all say. Got some big trucks over here. You didn't you didn't like what she said? Come on, Colin Squire. Come on, Sharon. You're absolutely right. Come on, Sharon. Sister Wesley, you don't like what she said or you don't like what the young lady did? What part of it you didn't like? I agree with her 100%. And I'm going to tell you why I agree with her. Sometimes you got to put people in their place and let them know this is not, I'm not going to accept on anything. Some people sit, like she said on the video, some people sleep it up under the rug and they just let it go. So you'll keep doing it. So you stop people in their tracks, they'll stop doing that. You know, it's like your kids. They keep doing stuff and keep doing stuff and you started warning them, stop doing that. Stop doing that. So you get them where you, she did it, she had to say something about it. Something wasn't getting through to her. Some people just, she said, maybe this is the help that you can't accept. Um, and we don't done all that we can do. And we done our part. But if you not have your hands open wide like the Lord, open your hands up wide so you will have room enough to receive these blessings I have for you. Open your hands up. Show, 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 open. If you open and receive what I'm trying to give you, you will understand the re you, you'll get it. It'll, it'll sink in. It'll be better for you. But um, from the beginning, well, I, I'm saying that, but I, I'm not saying the whole Facebook thing. She said she had to do it that way because the young lady did it that way and she wanted her to see. I want, since you won't, because the lady, she said the lady wouldn't even come talk to her. She wanted to always talk to the guy, to the youth pastor, whoever he is. She always wanted to talk to him. She never wanted to talk to her. And she said, no, you need to talk to me. She said, because we've done, we've done our part. We've done, we done what we can do. We tried to help. We tried to show you the way we've had people come to you. She said, I don't know you on a personal level, but I only know you from, from, from church. And the part I know you from, you're not accepting what she said, but why is it everybody else? When is it you? Because if you're going to every church and you're doing the same thing and putting down pastors and leaders and you're not accepting the help that's being presented to you, you're not accepting the word because their job, they did their part, praying with you, showing you the right way, uh, gave you what you needed, all the tools that you, you needed, all the resources you needed, and you didn't accept that re no resources. Yeah, I agree with her. Yeah, I, I know everybody can't help everybody. Everybody is not you. You're not gonna get the, the help that's being accepted, um, that's being presented to you. Let me say, the help that's being presented to you, um, people are not gonna accept it that way. But I think you have to give people what they what they messed up at. I I don't I don't agree with nobody talking down. I don't care if you agree, but when you start saying, but my thing is this: when you, the long long as you was going to that church, as long as you was a member of the church, you was getting the help. You was getting getting all these things that was going on with the church from the church you was getting all these things <coughs> excuse me <coughs> you was getting this help and um from the church and then you um you know accepting everything then but when you get mad because things don't go your way you don't like what was said it, it, they didn't do what you wanted them to do. It didn't. It, you wasn't a part of something that you felt like you should have been a part of. When it comes down to you doing that, I feel and they they've done all the help that they can do. The woman said, "I release you." She, I agree with her. You can only do so much. If it's turned down your ministry, it's turned down what you got, what your goal is, your vision is for the church. And I'm talking from the pastor stamp from from them. If the, God, if the Lord gave them a vision and to take that vision on and you want to turn down every everything that pops up you want to be negative about it you want to pull it down you want to, you want to accept that help you want to uh, put put talk down on the pastor on the leaders of the people of the church or whatever and but everything was fine then but when you left now or you're not getting things that go your way now everybody is a false prophet everybody is not a real preacher they fought they they fake. Why is it if they weren't fake as long as you were there? So my thing is that now you mad, now they're fake. They weren't fake when you was getting what you needed from them. 
that a lot of people don't see it that way. They might not. They well, it, no, no. I, I think it, I think for the for the most part of it, I think the young lady. I, I don't. I'm not gonna say just her. A lot of people that do that. If the Lord called them to preach, it doesn't mean that's not your job to turn them down or to put pull them into um pull them into a negative part um, or turn them down by saying because they're not doing what um, you feel like they should be doing. And like the lady said, agree with her on this. If you got so much um, um, you got all the tools that you need to be a leader, why don't you join, why don't you open up your own church? Start your own church. Because this, this particular church is not for you since you got to go out there and um, talk down on a pastor and a preacher, but you say they're not doing this right and they're not doing that right. If they're not doing those, then why don't you? And if you have these problems everywhere you go, every place that you go to, you got these same issues, you got these same problems. You do know it's not them, it's you. And I agree, you might need some medical attention. The church have done their part. Let me, let go, you need to go lay on somebody's couch and let them, let them evaluate you so you can get what you need. And a lot of people just play on that. They love that kind of stuff. They love that type of attention to where they, um, they like to see how far they can go and get, and they'll bounce around. And it's not just churches that they do it to. They bounce around through, through people. Um, okay, fly. They'll bounce around through people. And, uh, so they can try to use and see what they, what they can get out of that person. Um, or from those people and, and, and family members, they do it to family members and be like, oh, that family member didn't work. They didn't take the bait. Let me try somebody else. They didn't take the bait. And people do that. And you play on where, and, and since you don't know the person, you accept what they're, what they're putting out there. But once you learn them and you start saying, you be like, oh, 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 I see what your goal is. I see what you're trying to do. But when folks trying to play on the church and you're trying to down a pastor, watch how your life just unravels because you've done that. You, you talk down on the church. It might not agree with you. And every church is not for everybody. Every message that the pastor preach, the um, it's not for everybody. He's not going to teach the things that you think. It's not just you in the church. So if he just teach on everything that you want, he just preach on everything that you want, then he not helping nobody else but you. You have a congregation of 300 people, and he's only going to preach and teach on things that you want. It doesn't work like that. He has to try to touch everybody. Every Sunday when he preach, it's not going to be for you. It's not going to be for you. Your time coming, though. But see, it still should be something in there. But let me tell you, you don't wait on the pastor to give you those things. Hey, Rachel, you don't wait on the, the people to, um, you don't wait on the pastor to give you that word for you can, so you can be better. You can be, no, you, you come in. When you walk in the door, you be excited. You be happy. You bring something to the table, too. Don't just wait on the pastor and whoever is in, in, in charge just to bring everything for you. You come with something. Mix it in together. See how great that is. If you come with that love and that joy and expectation of reaching, of uh, receiving from the, the uh, receiving the Lord, see how that turns out. You walk in the door excited. You walk in the door just so, oh, I know the Lord finna bless me today. He finna, I'm finna get this breakthrough. I've been waiting all week long. Uh, Mary Mary got a song. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Um, God say, happy Friday. Um, they, they got a song called, um, Sunday morning. Beautiful song. Oh, it's something. I probably, I probably find it in a minute. But they, um, they say, I can't wait to Sunday morning because I, I can't wait to get there because I got so much I got to give God praises for. Like, this is what I do on Sunday morning. I, I'm coming. I'm not going to wait and let the pastor, the, the praise and worship people, the whoever, to get me excited and happy. No, I'm going to be excited and happy by myself. I'm coming in with this because I know. I know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is going to bless me. I know without a shadow of a doubt he's going to get me through. He's going to help me out. He's going to make uh, show me I, show me things that I probably haven't even seen before because I didn't come in excited. Come in with excitement. When folks see, I, I'm going to tell you, I know Sister Wesley is on here, but I love her daddy because he always has excitement. He goes through um, little things or whatever. Let me see if I can get over here. He go through little things or whatever. He came in the other mo Sunday morning and he was he was just looking like we was like, oh my gosh, he came. You know, he he walked through the doors because he had been down. He had been, you know, ill or whatever. I mean, down like you know the other way, but I mean down like he's he's been out because of uh his health issues or whatever. But when we seen him, we was all like, yay, Deacon Weston don't came in. Yay, 
he here? Because we hadn't seen him in a while. But you know what? Deacon Wesley, when he got there, he was so excited. He was so excited. He was like, even when Sunday, Sunday evening, we had to, he was over there just dancing. I was make, I was doing this with him. And he was up here because he bring excitement when he come in. He loved, she loved church. He loved Sunday school. He loved the excitement. And if you bring the excitement, it, it it's like a ripple effect. If, if, uh oh, let me move out y'all way. I got excited, y'all. I got excited. Look, let me park because the truck, big old truck coming down. <laughs> let me park. Um, but. He gets excited. And when I see him excited, I get excited too. I start mocking what he doing. And it's like a domino effect. Everybody, somebody are doing something that you enjoy, you do it. And it start being like, oh yeah. And they be like, hey, you see Deacon West? I be like, yeah, let's go. You bring excitement. If you, ha if you are excited, everybody else will start getting excited. If you boring and just like, yeah, Jesus loves me. Yes, he does. He really cares for me. He loves me. Ooh, yeah. That's all you got? What you think you're going to get out of it? Don't expect for the pastor to do that for you. You come with the excitement. They want us, hey, Mr. Bennett, how are you? Um, They want us to be excited. They want us to, when you come with that excitement, Y'all know my favorite is Pastor Key. Y'all, y'all are, we already know. <laughs> That's my favorite. Like, there, nobody, nobody. Listen, that video, yeah, see, I, now I got two songs. I got to go to work. But I got two songs that um <laughs> I need to let y'all hear. First of all, I told y'all about Sunday Morning by Mary Mary. It's just something about that song, the words that's in it. It tells you how they are so excited. I can't wait to get to Sunday morning because I already know what I'm expecting this blessing. I can't wait to sing in the choir because I'm expecting this blessing. I know I'm coming with, I'm so excited. You come with that. Don't come in and be like, I bet she going to come in with her hair a different way. I ain't get a chance to get my hair done. Look at her over there. What you coming in there for? Forget all that. If you ain't got nothing but your hair slicked down into a ponytail, come on with excitement, though. Let that ponytail swing however it swing. But come on with that excitement. Don't be upset or mad because somebody got something on. If you came for that, you were there for the wrong reason. You're not there to see what, who, 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 oh, I thought you were going to get the call. You don't come in there um, with um, trying to worry about what somebody else. Because if your focus is on other things and other people you, you're there for the wrong reason come with excitement when you open up them church door if church is already started when you get there come in excited and be clapping when you whatever they doing be like amen you know join in don't just come and sit there don't get all cute and dog up just to sit there and watch up no don't come for that come with excitement so in order for you to receive something you have to give something as well in order for the pastor and it makes it i'm my husband being a, a, a pastor, it makes it much easier for him to preach when the church is already up and they're excited and they ready. It makes it so much easier. He could just lay that thing. He just put the topping on top of that. He just, you know, that gravy. I don't look really care for gravy. When you put pour that gravy on top of it, just throw it dwindling down. Like it's just like, oh, this he he don't already he just we was already up there. But when he came in and gave that message that the Lord has given him. Bam, look at this. Look at all this. Now, I'm ready. I'm ready for Monday now because he already, we already we had some church. And you could tell people, y'all should have seen the church that we had today. Y'all should have been there. It is nothing like, yeah, you see it on, on live or you might see a video. But it's nothing like being in the building and receiving the presence of the Lord. Knowing that what he just did in this service was totally a blessing. And you, because you came, you came with excitement. Now the, the person you sit next to, they excited because you excited. Well, come on, let's do this. You know, everybody's excited. Hey, uh, Miss Evelyn, how are you doing? Everybody's come with excitement. So when you walk in the church doors, come with that excitement. Don't wait for the people to get you all pumped and primed up. Don't wait for the pastor to do it. Don't wait for the music to play to do it. Come in with excitement. Let that domino effect start taking place through you. That's a leadership role to me. That's being a leader. Because now I came in with excitement. I can show somebody else how to be excited. They gonna show, It's going to all start some type of way. You ain't trying to say it ain't no title. It ain't nothing that's trying to be, oh, I did that. No, we did this. This is us. We getting excited because of what Jesus has done for us. He's, he brought us through another day. He let us come through another day. He let us come in with all the activities of our limbs. We didn't go to the hospital. We came to the church. We didn't go to the go down the street and, and to get involved in no other kind of foolishness. We came to church. We got all, we smiling. We, we were able to put on clothes. We left our house. We didn't leave from up under the bridge. 
We didn't leave from up under somebody else's uh, uh, house or nothing. We left from our own place. We were able to open up our own refrigerator. The light came on when you open up the refrigerator. That's a blessing in itself because you might not have what you want in that refrigerator. You got a refrigerator to pull that door open. You see that light come on. Look at God. My electric's still on. I got a little food in here. Might not be exactly what I want, but I got something. That's excitement. You go to church on Sunday, I'm ready to give God all of this. All of me because he's been that good to me. Why not be excited? Why not be happy? Why not give him all of it anyway? He gonna because he's blessing you and he don't have to do it. We are like God, oh, you gotta do this for me. You you owe me this. No, y'all know that song. Y'all know I love songs. I love music. I love music. How much do I owe? There's not enough that you have. Materialistic, your life. There's not enough that you have that can say you you can pay it all out to if that was the case because I seen on Facebook somebody was um some pastor somebody got arrested uh for trying to sell tickets for five hundred dollars to heaven really you can't pay your way to heaven I don't care as my as my bishop I always say I don't care how cute and fine you are that 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 uh that um. Coke bottle or turn into a two a three liter. He he's just saying. <laughs> he's saying so I don't care how cute and fine you are, that's not gonna let you make it to heaven. That's not gonna that's not gonna put you close. No, that doesn't matter. That's just like you trying to go down there and get a car. You're gonna show all your look at me. Look at me. They're gonna give you a car. No, it, no. You, you can't you can't bribe Jesus like you know, you can't bribe him. You can't do that to him. So, um, all I'm saying is y'all, come with excitement, be happy, smile. Hey Miss Carolyn, how you doing? Be be excited. Be happy. Come with come with that joy of you know that the Lord is just gonna continue to bless you when you walk in those church doors. You know He's gonna always. I'm telling you that domino effect with that excitement that you have. It makes it so much easier for whoever is getting up to preach. It makes the service even better. I remember one time, maybe about maybe about three six months ago, maybe. We we got a church. It was all. It was about two thirty, almost three o'clock. But it it and I'm gonna tell you what. It, it wasn't even the older crowd. It was the young people because they see that the hey me, hey cousin. They see that the older the the younger crowd. The older crowd. I mean the younger crowd. Seen that the older crowd was was excited and happy. Those children got blessed. Those children was like, wow, this youth, the youth were happy about it. They came with excitement. They see excitement from our from the adults shut this door again they see the excitement from the adults and they got blessed and we was like this is the youth this is the youth look at them but they see it from us if we so dry and we sitting there playing on our phone and just like child wish they here up and sit down you don't have no excitement in you i'm telling y'all know if y'all see me at church <laughs> or you go to our church and y'all see that they be like why because i'm excited just for life in, in itself everything that's provided whether it's good or bad i'm happy about it because you have to go through some things to learn to learn some things so you can be better and greater and I'm just I'm just grateful just for the little bitty things and you you might not know how small things can can just bless your heart bless your soul and I thank the Lord for bringing me through so many different experiences and trials and tribulations to where I can just say it to somebody else and help somebody else but I get excited just when and I I be when I and I'm gonna tell you something else when you excited like that and you have some church the way we have you, you you have church you should be tired and woe down you just be like listen i gotta go home and lay down i got to go because you tired you don't give god all your praise i'm not saying everybody's not gonna shout everybody is not gonna do gonna say, uh give god praise like you do but whatever yours is give it to him he know that ain't for everybody else oh you don't never shout oh you don't never do this who told you that's the, that that's all i got to do hey sean how are you just, who told you that's all you have to do? No, you have to, you, you, if you come with the excitement, don't wait until somebody else pump and prime you up. They have to keep telling you to stand up. They have to keep telling you to come on, clap your hands. They have to keep telling you, oh, sing. They have to keep telling you to do things for God. Shouldn't nobody have to do that. You should already say, oh, I'm coming in singing. I'm coming in with a praise on my heart. I got a testimony within me. It, it's just that he just woke me up. You say that? That's a testimony in itself. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. You have, you've done that. You've done that. That's a conquer. You, you, you've done that. G great job. See, that's a blessing in itself. So now, let me, let me, let me come with excitement. Let me come with something because I already know God is going to, he's going to continue to bless me. He's going to continue to do it. I've seen his work. I've seen him do it. He might not come when I want him to, but he definitely shows up on time. That bill is due and you ain't got no more money. 
all that all your money is gone but it, when you call down there and say look i ain't got no money oh it's already paid jesus paid it out he already don't secure that or i'll give you two more weeks they might have told you the first time i can't give you no more time this is it but i'll give you two more weeks that's two weeks when you get paid. Now you got the money, but look at God. You ain't got to wait two weeks. You ain't got to go borrow no money. You ain't got to have people all in your business while you need to borrow the money. All that little small things. That's a blessing. I'm just saying, be grateful. I got a check. It ain't much, but I got a check in the mail the other day. I ain't tell y'all about it. But I got a check in this right here. I ain't even cash it. It ain't much, but listen, it's a check. I pay my tithes every time I get paid. On time. I pay my tithing every week. But... And, and, and like um yesterday we went to the little place down here, the little food place. They didn't even know. They was like, why you? I came in there excited. Oh, you excited? Everybody's in the restaurant store getting excited. Y'all go back and watch the live from yesterday afternoon. They That's that's what they did. And they was like, listen, so it's your birthday. Oh, I'm going to buy you a free cake. The workers there. You sure right. <laughs> Let me take that just by being nice. So I like birthdays. I like when you come in. We'll be back. And it's right down the street. We go in there all the time. But the excitement, you come in with excitement. I had a few ladies there and my Tamika was looking. She said, they were looking at you. Really. I said, I don't even know why I didn't do nothing to them. I came in with excitement. So they ain't here. They all bored and they just eating. Yeah, we had a great time. <laughs> but I came in with a whole nother atmosphere. I get excited. And Tamika said, you don't, I do not care. Cause this is from this, this is me. This is me. This is who I am. I don't change. I get excited just for a little bit of stuff. I, we walked in um what we go the other day we went to the one of these stores over here the other day and i seen some color paper y'all know i love you know to do little different things with when i and she grabbed me she's like mm. i said you know your friend don't you because you know i was gonna go over here and, and look at this paper because it was different colors they had like greens and blues and stuff and i started thinking what i can do with the programs with those papers and stuff and she was like, mm -mm, we're not doing that today. We're not doing that. And what we coming here for, we're not doing that. I'm sorry, my bad. I just get excited about small stuff. Staples, Office Max, I get excited about going in there. They got a clearance. Listen, excitement. My husband, he's, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Let me get out of here. Uh, but yes, let me see. I ain't saying nothing y'all said. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But please be excited. Be happy. You didn't like, okay, I seen that from the beginning. I watched the rest of it, so I got what she was talking about. Okay, cool, uh, Sister Wilson. Oh, okay, let me let me catch you up. They sure are. They sure are. They are seeking healing, and, and they won't, uh, they, they take it back. You're supposed to leave your burdens at the altar. Leave it there. Stop, pray about it, leave it there, and walk out. Watch God work. Now, if you start dealing and dealing in it, what's the point of telling him about it? What is the point? I don't get it. What people have to say about me is none of, none of my, <laughs> you right. I don't even, you know, I don't even care about that. I also need to be taught how to fight in spirit, how to pray and meditate. Come on. I agree with giving praises, and how can you not be thankful for what the created? Come on. Also, they have to start reading the Bible and asking for wisdom to understand. Do research and ask for understanding. Try the spirit by the spirit. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I just don't like for, to come into, um, I've been there, um, to different churches and everybody is sitting. Like I told <laughs> Bishop this morning, I said, um, like sitting like a bump on a log. Like, why come if you're just going to sit there and you're not ready to, you, you, it's like a routine. Why come to church like it's a routine? Like, you just, I was looking, y'all, like I said, Pastor Key is my favorite. I watched that video that they did. Woo, I had to text him and tell him I did. I texted Jumpy Key. When that video came out, I texted him, I did. And I told him, the most amazing video, gospel video I've seen in a long time, but i seen some people sitting down. I'm like, how can you sit down on this song? Do y'all not see? Do, are you not watching the same video? Are you not in the presence of this church? Jumpy kid, I don't sit down. I, I I don't sit down. That's why I don't wear my heels until he get up. I don't because I don't sit down until he to until he come out. When they get ready to start putting his little stuff up there, his little uh, podium with his picture and stuff, that's when I put my heels on. Cause now I'm gonna stand up. Okay, this is what this is this is how this go. But why come and just sit? What what good is that doing? That's not doing anything. I'm not coming to just sit and just look at them. No. No, no, we're not doing that. No, we're not doing that. Cyrus, Wendy, y'all. But people do. 
And if you don't come expecting to receive something from the Lord, you're not gonna get nothing out of it. Don't come, don't, don't, don't come and, and want the, everybody else to uh, give you what you need from the Lord. No, you come get it for yourself. Every man, I don't care if you're married or not, everybody got to see Jesus for themselves. You're gonna have to call your own when he call your name, because they ain't it ain't gonna be no group name. Even though I post and say Colin Squad, I still gotta see Jesus for myself. My husband still gotta see our children individually, have to see Jesus for themselves. So why come I'm not gonna give you it's not a group thing. Now we might praise God in a group, but when I leave this earth, I have to go with I got to go and answer for the things that I've done. Not for everybody else, not for the group. So come come excited, come happy, come ready. Come, come with all that ready to, to, to give God all these. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You don't have to. <laughs> I even heard Pastor Keith say this. You don't have to chase the Lord. That song, I'm chasing after you. You don't have to chase him. You don't. Just, just you, you don't have to chase him at all. Uh, I know one of the young ladies was trying to sing it at the church. My husband was like, mm-mm. Because you don't have to chase the Lord. They were trying to find words to, to uh, change that up. He was like, no, I don't care how you do it. They're chasing after you. You don't have to chase the Lord. You don't have to chase him at all. So, yeah, we don't say that one. Um, that's right, Sister Wesley. You're right. Because I'm about to walk in this building. I know they are. They probably are going to be looking at me crazy like, what is she doing? They probably think I'm FaceTiming. That's fine. They can think that too. Um, but, yes, y'all stay kind. Smile at somebody today. If you have see the need to hug somebody, hug somebody. Show them how excited you are just to be on this earth another day. May you made it to another Friday that wasn't promised. People get they die every day. My son was telling me he had two friends, and I think it was the young man that stayed two doors from the place, uh, other house we used to live in. Um, the young man that used to stay two doors, he got killed the other day. And he said this is, and he showed me somebody one of his other friends got killed. He said it's two in one week, and I'm like, yeah. So the Lord is calling the, the road. You don't have to be. A hundred to die. These these kids are leaving here early. Y'all know Malia. They got they still ain't. I don't think they still found that body. The baby. Um, watch this. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. Where everybody else? Come on, Friday. Come on. One on somewhere. One on somewhere. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. coming um but yes y'all say excited show somebody your excitement tell them how good god has been to you you stay excited carry somebody else give them a hug give them a smile tell them good morning how are you how is how you been you don't have to give nobody no long list they don't have to know all your business just be nice and kind to somebody you never know how they will bless you good morning good morning Some people don't speak or they don't get, get spoke to. You be that person, okay? I got to go. I'll be back later. We can discuss this some more, um, but I'll be back later. Um, Y'all have a blessed day. Remember, God loves you. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Talk to you later. Bye.